So, in preparation for today's talk, I did roughly seven drafts of this talk. The last few drafts were about six pages each. I then boiled those down to 26 four by six note cards, which I brought here yesterday, did a dry run. Last night, I boiled that down to 10 note cards, these 10 right here. This morning, I'm thinking about Miles Davis. Miles Davis said, practice, 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 practice. And when you get on stage, forget all of that and play. Let's play. <laughs> so we're going to see what happens. I'm trying to model for you this whole jazz process thing. Um, I teach children about jazz as a way for them to understand democracy. And when I was asked to connect what I do to today's theme, which is passing the baton, what I thought of was that the jazz masters are practitioners of American democratic ideals in sonic form. So that means in the music of this nation, jazz music, which was born on American soil, we have a blueprint for the essence of our own democracy. That means that those jazz masters, with every record they've recorded that we can now play and listen to and the current day jazz masters, there's the baton if you want it. They're passing us the baton for the way forward. And the day that our democratic practice matches the jazz master's performance is the day that we will have achieved the democratic promise that this country has always aspired to. So let me begin with some words that are not my own. In 2009, the White House opened a music series with the White House Jazz Studio. And later that day, the New York Times quoted Michelle Obama as follows. There is no better example of democracy than a jazz ensemble. I actually agree with this because there's a number of ways that jazz and democracy relate. The one that I think is most important is that they're both processes, which means a set of actions taken to achieve a desired end. But we care as much about the actions and the process as we do about the product, maybe even more so. So if you talk to a jazz musician about their art form or about maybe what the word jazz means to them, they're going to tell you that jazz is a philosophy. It's a way of life. It's the way that the jazz masters try to interact with everyone that they meet, off stage and on stage. Democracy is more than just the government that sits in Washington, D.C., or here in California, in Sacramento, or maybe downtown at the mayor's office. Democracy is about this idea that the voice of the governed must be represented in the government. And how we do that, what happens as a result of that, is the democratic process. Both of these processes are extremely difficult and challenging, and there is tension. So what I'm going to tr attempt to do today is get you inside the tension of the jazz process and relate it back to the tension of the democratic process. And we're going to look to the jazz masters for some guidance. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you a video that I was fortunate to be given permission to use from Paradigm Studio in Seattle. Thanks to them. This is from a documentary series that they did called Icons Among Us, Jazz in the Present Tense. And we're going to hear from Terrence Blanchard, who's one of today's best trumpet players. He's going to reference another jazz musician still around. His name is Wayne Shorter. He's one of the great jazz saxophone players and one of the great jazz composers. And Terrence is going to talk about when he met Wayne Shorter and the profound effect that it had on him. One of the greatest things that I could have ever had happen to me was meeting Wayne Shorter. Because I was such a Wayne Shorter fan, man, I wanted to be like the Wayne Shorter of the trumpet. I wanted to just be able to cry like him. I wanted to be able to just play those rhythms like him. And then as soon as I met him, I realized that was never going to happen because my personality was nothing like his. And I started to understand that the way he played was a direct 
connection to him as a person. That was probably one of the most scariest moments in my life because then the question became, well, who am I? Right? That's the real quest. That's the real search. Who am I? The reason why this is so important is because jazz is unlike other kinds of music. Take the European classical tradition, for example. If I'm a violinist, let's say, in an orchestra, my job is to execute the music of the composer. The composer wrote that music maybe last year, maybe 300 years ago. The jazz musician is on stage composing music in their head, heart, soul, and executing it nanoseconds later. A jazz musician is a composer and a performer at the same time. So that means that in jazz, we exalt the performer over the songwriter. Now, of course, there are great jazz songwriters. Ellington, Wayne Shorter is one, and many others. They write songs, but on stage, we're interpreting those songs. We're improvising extemporaneously on those ideas. It's the process in the moment. What is more, it's not just me improvising, it's all of us improvising. So jazz is collective improvisation, and this is where the difficulty comes in. But before we move, just to sum up, this who am I question is a question for every jazz musician because if I'm composing and playing right now, who I am matters because I'm giving you who I am through my music. Terrence Branch is going to talk again in the next clip. He's talking to some students at the Thelonious Monk Institute. He's going to mention Wayne Shorter again. Check out what he says. It's a little bit different. That means exactly what you were talking about, Jake, in terms of what Wayne told you. The music is not about you. It's not about you. It's about the music. Make it about the music. Make it about the moment. I promise you that he is not revising the previous statement. On the one hand, we have, who am I? On the other side, at the same time, it's not about me. It's about the group. The music is the sonic form of democracy. How well we work together is going to determine the music. How well we work together is going to determine the nature of our democracy. The jazz musician is pretty adept at living in this space. They're not thinking, oh my God, is it about me? Is it about the group? It's not this frantic thing. The jazz masters, they balance that. They live in the fluid space between the two. Okay? I want us to look at an example of what that actually looks like on stage. Again, another clip from Icons Among Us. This is the Robert Glasper trio with Alan Hampton on bass, Jemiah Williams on drums. Probably gonna have to play this a couple times. It might be hard to catch it the first time. If the, if the screen goes crazy, just listen, okay? That's all I want to say. Just, just listen, because we're going to listen to it at least twice.
Okay, so we got some resonance going on with the with the room and the audio. That's cool. Um, what I hope you noticed in that example, first of all, let me ask a question. Raise your hand if you think the piano player was leading that exchange. If you think the piano player was the lead voice, was the power in that example, had the most power in that example, raise your hand. We got a few. How many of you think the drummer had the most power and was leading that exchange? A few more hands. How many of you want to vote for the bass player as the one who is really holding that down? Cool. This is the beauty of jazz and democracy. It's a shared leadership. Power does not rest in one place. How many of you feel that they were playing together? Okay, hip audience. How many of you feel that it was like cacophony? I don't know what the heck's going on. Cool, okay, yeah, brave souls admitting that, dig it. Um, let me play it again. I'm gonna free my hands as soon as I click this thing. I'm gonna clap to you the pulse just so you can see that there is something they are tied to. With all the syncopations and rhythms and exchange, they're tied to something. And they're all responsible for holding their piece of that something. Let's watch it again. So hopefully we're on some consensus. There was something, there was a through line there that they were all tied to for all of the interaction. Okay, I wanna tell you just for a second, a little bit what I'm doing now is like what they're doing because I threw my cards down there and I can't read that far. It's amazing to me to imagine someone getting on stage in front of people who paid their good hard earned money to hear beauty and not know exactly what it's gonna sound like. Jazz musicians live right here on the edge. It could all fall apart the very next nanosecond. While they do that, this question of who am I, my individual voice is paramount, but so is my interaction with everyone else. Stakes are similarly high in democracy, and the tensions are similarly high. The Founding Fathers invented a system called checks and balances. The framers, I should say, of the Constitution. Separated pockets of power. Executive branch, legislative branch, judicial branch. Every branch has a unique role. A bass player's got a role, a drummer's got a role, a piano player's got a role. Each branch of our government has some power over the other two. That was because the founders did not want this new nation to go the way of British monarchy. They wanted to make sure that no person, no faction could win the majority and remain unchecked. So they created a system that was gonna be difficult and that was going to have tension. Presidents get so frustrated when they can't just do what they want. Presidents are not kings. Right, the Supreme Court, sorry, that's unconstitutional. Congress feels the same way. The president wants to put somebody on the Supreme Court. Congress says, no, sorry, we don't like that person. There's all types of checks and balances that happen in our nation between those branches of government. 
The way that the jazz musicians deal with that tension is first to listen, to listen, to listen, and fourth, to respond. Miles Davis said, listen and then play. I want to say that if our representatives in Congress, for example, on either side of the aisle, listened to each other as opposed to dismissing ideas simply because it was proposed by someone from across the aisle, we might see the type of dialogue we just saw. No less complicated, but a dialogue. I believe that our jazz masters who practice democracy in sound, on stage, every night, with these complications, who represent who they are among others, really show us the way forward. To be clear, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, when they first landed on the world stage in the late 18th century, shone a bright light. And the Africans living on American soil lived in the shadow of that light. But their music reflected the light. Jazz is created by the descendants of African slaves. They created the most democratic form of music the world has ever seen, while being outside of the dem democratic promise that our framers and the founding fathers had established. Embedded in this music is the essence of who we are. We need to teach our children about jazz, and we need every kid in the nation to be in a jazz band. Because when they are, they're going to know what it feels like to be listened to. They're going to know what it feels like to listen to someone and respond to them. They're going to know what it feels like to have to develop who am I. But to never feel like they are separate from this national, ongoing composition that asks us, all of us together, who are we? You can see the best of democracy on jazz stage, stages every night all around the world where good jazz is played. Support live jazz music. Wherever you go, go see jazz. You might see the best of who we can become. I'm going to pick up my cards now. Thanks. Thank you.